Hey, the Gracious Gang, it's Mike from thegraciousguest.org with you, journeying through Luke's Gospel one chapter at a time, and here we are at chapter 15. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to please invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this content, share it far and wide, especially with anyone you think that uh, may benefit in a particular way from this reading today uh, or any of this series we've been doing. So thank you so much for doing that ahead of time. Let's get right to Luke chapter 15. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took his journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything a great famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have fed on the pods the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and make merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to make merry now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Behold, these many years I have served you. And I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. 
But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for this brother, your brother, was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a beautiful anecdote of a missionary in a faraway land who brought the faith and one of the people who was deeply affected by the message of the gospel and who became a very pious Christian himself was an artist. An artist who received a commission to paint a uh, picture of this scene, which is one of his favorite scenes, I think his favorite scene in the gospel. And he works on it and works on it toils over it, and he completes this masterpiece. And the time comes to show it, and the missionary gets to see this this painting after all this time. And he notices that the father has one red shoe on and one blue shoe in the picture. And not being sure what to make of this, and not sure if he should bring it up, you know, perhaps it's a mistake, but how could this artist who's so particular and so focused on his work, makes such a mistake. He asks him about it. He says, why does the father have two shoes on? And the artist just smiles and says that the way he sees it, so captivated by this boundless, merciful love of the father in this story, who stands for God the father, who sees his son from far away because he's looking far away for him on the horizon, and who runs in this culture, older men, patriarchs of families, they don't go running out outside. You know, you come to them. It's a sign of respect. And this artist commented, that kind of love, that kind of mercy, the kind of man who has that kind of love, grabbed the first two shoes he could find and threw them on and just bolted out the door to embrace his son. He didn't care about what shoes he had on. And so keep that in mind. God's shoes don't match. He loves you so much, the moment you have even the slightest interest in repenting of your sins, he'll race to you faster than you can imagine, and his shoes won't match. So God bless all of you. Let's end with our prayer. Our Lady of Chestahova. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Mother of Chestahova, thou art full of grace, goodness, and mercy. I consecrate to thee all my thoughts, words, and actions, my soul and body. I beseech thy blessings and especially prayers for my salvation. Today I consecrate myself to thee, good Mother, totally, with body and soul, amid joy and sufferings, to obtain for myself and others thy blessings on earth and eternal life in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for stopping by today. Join me next time for our next chapter of Luke as we get to Luke 16. And until then, take care. God bless you.